So combustion gases enter an adiabatic gas turbine at a pressure of 420 kilonewtons per meter squared and a temperature of 900 degrees Kelvin. The gases leave the turbine at a temperature of 680 degrees Kelvin and a velocity of 770 meters per second. The turbine delivers 7,500 kilowatts when 30 kilograms of combustion gases are used. Calculate the velocity of gases entering the turbine ignoring changes in potential energy. Secondly, if the turbine had been reversible and the exit pressure 143 kilonewtons per meter squared, what had been the temperature of the gases at the end of the expansion process and the required mass flow rate of the gases? We're told the velocities may be assumed to be more altered. Okay, and we're told that the specific heat capacity of constant pressure of the gases is 1.14 kilojoules per kilogram degrees Kelvin, and the ratio of specific heats is 1.4. Okay, so this is our turbine, so these are our, our gases, and we're told there's 30 kgs of gases coming through the turbine. The pressure at the inlet is 420. The temperature is 900 degrees Kelvin, and the temperature at the outlet is 680. Alright, so we go back to the steady state uh, energy equation. And uh, in the turbine, there is no uh, heat added or, or subtracted. Uh, it's just what work is being extracted from the, from the turbine. We're told to neglect um, potential energy changes. So this value here will be gone. And the change in kinetic energy is V2 squared minus V1 squared, and the change in enthalpy is Cp times T2 minus T1. So if I plug in the values, so the work done, so this work value, was 7,500 kilowatts. So that's uh, 7,500,000 watts. The Mass flow is 30 kilograms. Cp is uh, 1140 joules. So I'll convert from kilojoules to joules. It's always a good uh, idea to do this when we have velocities, um, or else you can get your units mixed up. Because this is going to give your answer in joules, and if I'd left this in kilojoules, we'd really get a, we'd get a mistake. So T2 is 680, T1 is 900. V2 we're saying is 70, yeah, and we're asked to find V1, so what is the velocity of gases entering um, the turbine? Okay, so um, first we can do is um, multiply out the values here. So 1140 times 680 minus 900 is minus 250,800. We then divide both sides by 30. And now I'm going to bring the 250,800 across to this side. So we have 250,800 minus 250,000, that just gives me 800. And multiply both sides by 2. And then bring V1 across to this side and the 1600 back here. So I get an expression for V1 squared. Now from that I can work out what V1 is. And it works out to be 57.4 meters per second. Okay, so that's the first part of the question. Uh, the second part was uh, to well, let me just go back and have a look at that. So the second part was if the turbine had been reversible and the exit pressure was 143 kilonewtons per meter squared. What would have been the temperature of the gases? Yeah, I assume everything else is the same. Okay, so uh, we assume the output pressure is now 143. And uh, we have to assume that it has been um, reversible in our process. Therefore, we can use our uh, equation. Plug in the values. So 
So T1 was 900, P2 is 143 kilopascals, uh, P1 was 420 kilopascals, so that should be a P there. Doesn't so matter, they're going to cancel out anyway. Then the equation uh, when a cross multiply by both sides by 900. I get this, and that works out to be 661 degrees. Um, yeah, so I'll just plug the values into the calculator here, and I get 661 degrees Kelvin. Alright, so the work then is the change in enthalpy plus the change in um, kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy, though we're, we're neglecting that. We had already worked out that the velocity was uh, 57.44 meters per second here. We were given this velocity was 70, and we assumed everything else was the same. So our temperature is roughly the same as we looked at the previous start of the uh, equation. Okay, so when I solve uh, for that, it works out to be a mass flow of 27. Point six kilograms per second. Alright, so I you know, just I like you know, answered everything. How would have been the temperature of the gas at the end of the expansion process? Okay, we got that, it was going to be 661. What would the mass flow have been? It would have been 27.6. Okay, that's that question.